Okay, dear students, last class uh, we discussed the topic of transport of oxygen in our respiratory system. Uh, oxygen is transported via oxygenation process. It's not a oxidation process. We have already mentioned that hemoglobin is responsible for this transport system. And the process is called oxygenation not oxidation there are some differences in these two states today we will discuss about the hemoglobin hemoglobin which is responsible for this transport and now this is so important protein in our body and you know blood is composed of three kinds of cells red blood cells white blood cells and platelets uh, hemoglobin is the main component of red blood cell. This is the highest number of cells found in our body. This is also called a metalloprotein. Why this is metalloprotein? Because the term contains the definition. It contains a metal ion on its protein structure. So those protein which have metals in their structure and the uh, active formation of this protein require any metal that is called metalloprotein. There are a lot of metalloproteins in our body, mm -hmm. especially hemoglobin uh, is uh, one of them. And this is iron containing protein. So here the metal is iron. That's why it is red in color. You, you see when a blood is oozes out in our, from our body, we see this is red in color. So iron containing uh, oxygen transporting metalloprotein in the red blood cell of all vertebrates all vertebrates animal contain this red blood cell and this is iron containing oxygen transport protein this is the shortly introduction of hemoglobin actually hemoglobin carries oxygen from your lungs to the body tissue and where it burns your food particles give you nutrition in the form of ATP. Then it carries carbon dioxide from the tissue to the respiratory organs. This is the main function of hemoglobin. And to uh, the carrying capacity of hemoglobin is 1.39 ml of oxygen per gram of hemoglobin. So if you have one gram of hemoglobin, it can carry it can carry 1.3.39 ml of oxygen. Now come to the structure of the hemoglobin. This is so uh, uh, this is so difficult structure. Uh, we will see here. Hemoglobin is made up of uh, four subunits. Four subunits. Each of the subunit contain a heme moiety which is attached to a polypeptide chain. Here, the four subunits, each of them contain a heme moiety. So, uh, this heme moiety, you can see here, this is uh, one of the four subunits. In one subunit, we can see a ferrous ion in ferrous state. Iron is present here, not ferric state. So in ferrous state, it has two valency. We can see uh, ferrous ion is bind to the uh, four imidazole ring. One imidazole, two imidazole, three imidazole, and four imidazole ring. And four imidazole ring is directly attached to the iron molecule, ferrous molecule. Where we can see two bond, two uh, covalent bond bound to bind to the nitrogen of imidazole ring, and two others are coordinate bond. So this bonding is so important. I think in first year you have studied coordination compound and uh, covalent bonding. Here, this two bond is 
covalent bonding and these two bond is coordinate bonding another coordinate ferrous has four coordination numbers so it has two another coordination number these two coordination number which is attached to the polypeptide chain here polypeptide chain is uh, four polypeptide chains are present four kinds especially in human two kinds of chain are present what two is alpha chain and two is beta chain so normal hemoglobin contains four polypeptide chains among them two alpha chains and two beta chains so heme is a porphyrin ring complex four pyrrol molecules are present there we have seen already four pyrrol molecules this is pyrrol molecules this four pyrrol molecules present in each heme part and one iron is present there and this iron contains one oxygen molecule it can carry one oxygen molecule when oxygen bind to this iron you can see removal of one uh, coordination number with the polypeptide chains and it attached with one oxygen molecule so each heme can carry one oxygen molecule so how about the total hemoglobin total hemoglobin contains four heme four heme molecules will carry how much how many oxygen students can you hear me sir four four molecules so each heme can carry each molecule of oxygen as as there are four molecules four heme molecules so it can carry four molecules of oxygen here it is written actually hemoglobin is represented as hb4 as it is mentioned as hb4 so it can carry four oxygen molecule when four oxygen molecule bind to it it can form into sb4 o8 this is the transformed form formation of hemoglobin this is called oxygenated hemoglobin and this is called deoxygenated hemoglobin whenever you see sb4 that means this is deoxygenated hemoglobin whenever you see sb4 o8 this is called oxygenated hemoglobin so this is the uh, formation uh, structure of hemoglobin and the quaternary structure protein has uh, four kind of structure primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure and quaternary structure quaternary structure means the three dimensional structure that we see uh, inside our body that is called quaternary structure so quaternary structure of hemoglobin determines its affinity for oxygen actually when hemoglobin is a configuration of deoxyhemoglobin in that case globin molecule are tightly bound to the uh, iron molecules so that configuration is called tense configuration tense means tight very tight configurations and it is uh, mentioned as t configuration so when there is no oxygen in the hemoglobin that is called deoxyhemoglobin and the globin units are tightly bound to the iron ferrous and that produces tense configurations in this case the affinity towards oxygen is less so in t configurations the affinity towards oxygen hemoglobin affinity is very much less but when it comes into contact with high pre pressure of oxygen one molecule of oxygen is first bound to any one of the hemoglobin you know we have four heme molecules in the hemoglobin if one oxygen can bind to any one of the four heme part it produces another configurations three dimensional configurations that is called relaxed configuration r so t configurations transformed into the r configurations by binding one molecule of oxygen only 
and it will create some pocket and this pocket will increase the affinity towards oxygen 500 fold so it is required to bind one molecule of oxygen first then 500 fold increases the oxygen affinity and another three heme portions will also bind to the oxygen consequently and this is happening uh, through your body always and in hemoglobin carries those oxygen four uh, molecules of oxygen each hemoglobin can carry four molecules of oxygen to your tissue and first of all the deal oxyhemoglobin was in a tense configuration when first oxygen bind it transformed into relaxed configuration whenever it produces relaxed configuration it exposes more oxygen binding sites, more pockets increases. So it will uh, bind to another three oxygen molecules. So total four oxygen molecules will come into contact and it will carry to the tissues. And it is very much important that how many times these T configurations and R configurations are changing. Hemoglobin is itself a protein. So protein has limited capacity to do the work. In our red blood cell, we have seen that these changing configurations, it can change 108 times in your life of red blood cell. We know the red blood cell life span is 120 days. In 120 days, it can change your, its configurations from T configurations to R configurations, from R configurations to T configurations that is 108 times only. So when a hemoglobin is synthesized in your liver, this hemoglobin can carry oxygen uh, almost 120 days only. It will survive the red blood cell, which is uh, found in your uh, mesoderm, bone marrow. So this red blood cell will carry uh, oxygen uh, it will uh, survive only 120 days and in 120 days it can uh, transform this configuration 108 times so we can see hemoglobin each hemoglobin in rbc can do this work only once in a day so as we have a lot of hemoglobin in our body it can carry oxygen uh, in this uh, way this is tense configurations to relax configurations by changing these configurations hemoglobin carries oxygen now the relationship of hemo uh, oxygen and hemoglobin uh, dissociation as we know hemoglobin bind to the oxygen so there will be a a dissociation curve because this oxygen sh should have to remove in your tissue. So oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve relates the percentage of oxygen, percent saturation of the oxygen carrying power of hemoglobin to the partial pressure of oxygen. If, if I ask you how many in which partial pressure of oxygen hemoglobin can bind to oxygen because partial pressure of oxygen is very important if we see that hemoglobin has less affinity to oxygen in deoxygenated condition so what will happen if you have less affinity towards the uh, uh, towards the oxygen so you have to push uh, push the hemoglobin to bind with oxygen and this pushing pressure comes from the partial pressure of oxygen so there is a relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen and the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin if we uh, stay in a condition where oxygen is not sufficient we can feel that condition and we just uh, craving for oxygen in that a moment suppose you are stuck in a uh, lift where 
10 or 15 people are remaining, stay in the lift and the lift just collapsed and the button is not working. You will see the oxygen level is decreasing the, uh, minute by minute, time to time. So you will feel the conditions, how the partial pressure of oxygen is very important. Now in the corona pandemic, we also see that oxygen is, partial pressure of oxygen is also decreasing in the patients. That's why they need oxygen ventilation. They cannot take normal air oxygen. That's why they have to support from ventilations. So there is a relationship between partial pressure of oxygen and the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin. You know, when a patient in the ventilator, he has hemoglobin in his body too, but he cannot take those uh, oxygen from the air. That's why we have to supply him uh, another uh, ventilator machine so that a lot of oxygen is present there. So there is a relationship and this relationship is uh, explained by oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. This curve is especially uh, occurred due to the TR interconversion of the hemoglobin. And the T configuration changes into R configurations. So this curve will be similar as sigmoid shape. Sigmoid means S shape. Here we can see the sigmoid shape where if we increase the partial pressure of oxygen, we can see if we increase the partial pressure of oxygen, the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin will increase. Let me tell you when oxygen saturation from uh, partial pressure of oxygen uh, comes, uh, increases from zero to 60, it will sharply increase, sharply increase till the partial pressure of oxygen 60, you can see. And from partial pressure of uh, oxygen at 60, it will increase sharply from zero to 90%. But after then that, when you increase the partial pressure of oxygen from 60 to more than 100, the curve remains uh, on the plateau. Plateau means remain still same. In the partial pressure of 60, you see the oxygen saturation is 89 or 90. Here we can uh, see the figure. At partial pressure of oxygen uh, or at 60, the oxygen hemoglobin saturation is 90%. After then that, whenever you increase the partial pressure of oxygen, 70, 80, 90, the Oxygen saturation changes normally, very in normal mode. Generally, 95% oxygen saturation is required in our body in normal condition. Whenever it falls below 90, it is so uh, dangerous for our body. So, uh, in the corona patient, we can see the partial pressure of uh, oxygen saturation is. Uh, uh, tested by uh, a pulse oximeter and a lot of people are buying in panic buying that is they buy the pulse oximeter too and me, me also buy one pulse oximeter to see my oxygen saturation level although it takes uh, more than thousand taka more in the online shopping but I think uh, this is new to me and I learned how to uh, test my oxygen saturation level. If you have uh, some problem in your breathing, uh, then oxygen hemoglobin saturation will be reduced. And if the rate is below 95, that is uh, the dangerous level is starting. And below 90 is very dangerous. Uh, anytime our uh, body can collapse. So partial pressure of oxygen is so important. We have to live in an environment where oxygen is sufficient. And we know this oxygen comes from the tree. So we have to live in a, uh, a tree full compartment. A green environment is very required. So as the city is increasing, the population is increasing, so we have lack of oxygen. 
you know in dhaka city only few places have very good uh, uh, environmental conditions it is and that is one of them is dhaka university area because it resides beside the uh, ramna park and the air quality of this area is far far better than the air quality of mirpur as well as uh, than motihil or other places so this is how uh, i think i am lucky enough to live in the dhaka university area i can get the fresh air here but what about the other places so if you have any chance to live in the villages or in the remote area i think you should capture this and i know some people who studied in oxford university and they come back to the bangladesh and they are involved in the social agro businesses they don't want to live in the uh, city area because they want some fresh air and the nature is taking the revenge too we have um, pushed them uh, pushed the nature in a uh, massacre state that's why we need to live in a green environment otherwise uh, this natural oxygen the taking of this natural oxygen capacity will decrease you see in the corona patients the uh, capacity of taking this natural air is decreasing that's why oxygen saturation is decreasing and you need oxygen ventilation support but our creator gives us the opportunity to take this oxygen natural oxygen our lungs respiratory system is designed as well that is you can take the natural oxygen freely but we doesn't show our uh, thanks to the creator so be careful about the partial pressure of oxygen whenever the partial pressure of oxygen falls to below 70 uh, then you will have some problems the so partial pressure of oxygen should be remain uh, complete always so that your oxygen situation uh, should have been completed so this is called sigmoid shape and uh, uh, as we already know hemoglobin contains uh, can carry uh, each gram of hemoglobin can carry 1.39 ml of oxygen and the normal blood contains 15 gram of uh, hemoglobin per deciliter that means 100 ml of blood contains 15 gram of hemoglobin so your 100 ml of blood can carry 20.1 ml of oxygen bound to hemoglobin when 100% saturation is occurred but generally 100% saturation is not happening always if 100% saturation comes then 20.1 ml of oxygen can carry but 100% saturation doesn't come you can see here 100% is not coming as long as you are increasing the partial pressure of oxygen 100% will not come because oxygen is also carrying in dissolved state. Mostly your oxygen saturation will be occurred at the highest level that is 97.5 only, not the 100%. So whatever the partial pressure of oxygen, the percent saturation is not more than 97.5. Why it happens? Because there's some slight admixture of venous blood that bypasses the pulmonary capillaries that is physiologic shunt so there are some shunt physiologic shunt that blocks the admixture of venous blood to the arterial blood always there will be a physiologic shunt but in that case a small amount of venous blood always uh, mixed with the, your uh, arterial blood that is through pulmonary capillaries that's why 97 percent situation uh, is occurred three percent cannot be uh, done always so uh, in uh, from the curve we can see the 97.5 percent situation will be appeared on partial pressure of oxygen in 97 millimeter of mercury so whenever the partial pressure of oxygen is less than 97 millimeter of mercury then situation will be reduced as of from this calculation we can see the total amount of uh, arterial blood that carries uh, 
the total amount of oxygen that is 19.8 ml of oxygen in which 0.29 ml will be uh, carried in dissolved condition in solution oxygen is also dissolved in uh, water but its uh, dissolving capacity is less than carbon dioxide that's why 0.29 ml of oxygen is carrying uh, through this uh, water molecule and uh, that is a uh, uh, dissolved state and other oxygen is carrying through your hemoglobin that is 19.5 ml bound to the hemoglobin and total is 19.8 ml we we can see in the uh, figure 2 that is present here when partial pressure of oxygen is 100 your dissolved oxygen capacity is 0 0.3 it also decreased as the partial pressure of oxygen is decreased that is totally the concentration of partial pressure, uh, oxygen is related with the dissolved condition in the 100 percent partial pressure of oxygen 100 percent uh, 97.5 percent situation comes so this is the total uh, uh, oxygen carrying capacity here is a comparison which gases uh, pass uh, through your hemoglobin. Uh, oxygen can carry in arterial guard 0.29 ml in dissolved condition in combined 19.5. In venous blood, dissolved condition is 0.12 and combinedly, combined means hemoglobin, bind with the hemoglobin 15.1. What about the carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide has more dissolving capacity in the water than oxygen so it will dissolve in water more than oxygen here we can see 2.62 ml of carbon dioxide dissolve in water and bind to the hemoglobin 46.4 percent in venous blood obviously venous blood has oxygen uh, uh, carbon dioxide carrying capacities more than the arterial blood so oxygen is uh, uh, carbon dioxide carrying from the tissue to the lungs so more carbon dioxide will be present here in diesel condition 2.998 ml and in combined combination combinedly 49.7 ml and in case of nitrogen there will be no change nitrogen doesn't bind to the hemoglobin you see no binding to the hemoglobin nitrogen only carries through your dissolved state which is dissolved in the water so today we have finished the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve tomorrow next class we will discuss about the factors affecting this curve okay thank you very much